in South Korea, where U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has met the country's acting president, Chuang Kyo-yan. The two met in the capital, Seoul. Tillerson arrived at Osan Air Base before visiting the demilitarized zone at Panmunjom between the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and South Korea. Tillerson and Huang discussed the need for a new approach in dealing with the DPRK. Tillerson also met with Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-se. The U.S. Secretary of State is on a two-day visit to South Korea as part of his first tour to Asia. He'll visit Beijing on Saturday. Well, during a press conference uh, with the South Korean Foreign Minister, Rex Tillerson said that all options remain on the table in dealing with the DPRK. Our correspondent Jack Barton is in Seoul. He explains what these options are. With uh, a very much a departure from the former U.S. policy of deterrence and containment, Rex Tillerson today saying now all options are on the table. That clearly includes uh, the potential for a preemptive military strike. And as part of this visit, the U.S. is deploying permanently uh, Grey Eagle drones here, which are capable of carrying missiles. They can theoretically be used to destroy nuclear bunkers, also in, uh, to destroy individuals in a decapitation strike. So quite controversial. We can have a little uh, a listen now to a little bit of what Rex Tillerson said. Let me be very clear. The policy of strategic patience has ended. We're exploring a new range of diplomatic, security, and economic measures. All options are on the table. North Korea must understand that the only path to a secure, economically prosperous future is to abandon its development of nuclear weapons, ballistic missiles, and other weapons of mass destruction. Now, Rex Tillerson did go on to say that uh, the all options was not an imminent option, that the U.S. and its allies would respond to each new test, each new step along the way as the DPRK moves much closer to a successful nuclear missile. He said there were still many steps to be taken before it got serious, uh, but clearly taking the gloves off there and um, making it very clear the U.S. prepared to play tough, though, as I mentioned earlier, really not spelling out in full what this alternative policy is that the U.S. is now talking about when it comes to deterring the DPRK's missile program. Well, as you heard there, Secretary Tillerson is indeed expected in Beijing on Saturday. CGTN's Nathan King joins us now with more from Washington. Uh, Nathan, of course, the Secretary of State's Asia visit is coming at a rather crucial time uh, in terms of what's happening in that region. Um, just what is on the agenda or what can we expect from Tillerson's visit to Beijing? I think Jack said it all there. The DPRK, of course, going to be top of the agenda. And the words that Rex Tillerson has spoken in Seoul will, of course, be talked about in Beijing. What is this new approach? We know, actually, here in Washington, that there is a top-down review of policy when it comes to the DPRK. We just don't know what the actual conclusions are, because there aren't any at the moment. But Rex Tillerson said just then that uh, strategic patience era, that is, uh, allowing room for some sort of negotiation to take fruit is over. We just haven't seen exactly what's going to be replacing it with. And it's very much at odds with what Beijing has been saying. Beijing, of course, has said, look, the deployment of THAAD has increased tensions on the uh, uh, Korean Peninsula, that the U.S. Uh, and uh, the North Koreans are on a collision course, and has even suggested that the U.S. Uh, and the Republic of Korea halt military exercises in exchange for Pyongyang putting a freeze on uh, nuclear activity. That has been rejected by Washington. Um, that could de-escalate tensions, but Washington has other ideas. And Beijing will, of course, be very, very uh, keen to hear what they are. Um, there has been a lot of talk here in Washington uh, that uh, uh, the Trump administration expects more from Beijing when it comes to cooperation on the DPRK, but they haven't quite spelled out what exactly that is. There is lots of talks of ramping up sanctions, including financial sanctions, very much uh, akin to what the U.S. imposed on Iran uh, before the nuclear deal. So we'll have to wait and see. Indeed, Nathan, it seems quite a lot at stake in Asia, uh, hinging really on this visit. But what about back home? What are analysts, experts, and indeed ordinary citizens expecting to come of this visit as far as U.S. and China ties are concerned? 
Well, lots of talk here in Washington over the last week of when President Xi and President Trump will actually meet. Uh, the rumors and reporting here is that it will happen in April and that we are just going to get an announcement in Beijing. We'll have to wait and see uh, whether that happens. And there's talk of it happening at the president's estate here in the U.S. at Mar-a-Lago in Florida. That is uh, a rela more relaxed environment of the White House akin to the 2013 perhaps meeting between uh, then U.S. President Barack Obama and President Xi Jinping at Sunnylands uh, in California. We'll have to wait and see. So that would be uh, a step forward because these two leaders need to form some sort of relationship. But still, trade, for example. We have Angela Merkel here right now, the leader of Germany uh, in Washington. They have a big trade surplus with the U.S. So does China. And there is going to be big discussions here in the U.S. about whether they're going to slap tariffs on countries that have a trade surplus with the United States. Germany is a test case here. So uh, that's going to be interesting to see uh, where that goes in Beijing. And of course, uh, everything from the East China Sea to the South China Sea. One thing we can tell you, though, that the cooperation between the US and China when it came to climate change seems dead now, especially after the release of uh, US President Trump's budget, where he's gutting those programs. That was a glue that held these two nations together on a global issue. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what other issues they can unite on rather than divide on. Indeed, and of course, we'll be keeping a close eye on that as a visit approaches on a Saturday. Thanks very much, Nathan King, live for us there in Washington. Now, indeed, China has also spoken up on the Korean Peninsula tensions. The country says it strictly adheres to the UN resolution on the DPRK, but it is strongly against any nation that adopts unilateral sanctions against a third party based on its domestic laws. Promoting the denuclearization and safeguarding peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula are in accordance with the efforts of the international community. The relevant parties have worked hard and made positive progress. The present situation of the DPRK nuclear issue is not because there are no good agreements or dialogues among relevant parties, but because those important agreements have not been effectively implemented or executed.